So imagine that you're a homeowner, you're home on a Saturday morning, you hear a knock at the door, and someone you know, steps up to your door, it's me, I'm a solar panel salesman from Intelligent Solutions Incorporated, and I'd like to talk to you about the possibility of um, a solar installation on your house. I just happen to be in the neighborhood, a lot of your neighbors are getting an installation, I've taken the liberty of walking your property, I'm pleased to say that your home would qualify for our latest and greatest um, panels. Do you mind if I share just a few of the features of these solar panels? I didn't think so. So let me tell you, so the first thing that you should know about is our panels are really special. They will actually track the direction of sunlight throughout the day and they'll rotate to follow the sun and maximize their efficiency. Um, they also, you may have heard of that feature from some other sellers, but ours have some other special features. For example, um, if they collect any rainwater or debris or anything else on the panels during the day, the panels will actually oscillate to one side or the other at night to shed all of that debris and rainwater in order to flatten out the next morning and, and resume photos, um, not photosynthesis, <laughs> resume production of uh, energy for your home. Um, there are also some other features. So for example, if you have some limbs on the, a nearby tree that start to brush up against the panels during a storm, the panels will actually protect themselves by folding up neatly into a much smaller protective shape. Um, and there's so much more, I could go on and on, but the most important thing you should know about our panels are lifetime guaranteed. And you know what, you don't even have to call into the hotline. If anything goes wrong with one of the panels, if it's damaged in any way, the system will actually reabsorb all of the essential components of the panel, and then a few days later, it'll start growing a new panel in, uh, in its place. And by this point, you're going, okay, I, I think I've heard of solar panels tracking the sun, but I don't know about this growing a new panel thing. You would be right to be skeptical that that kind of technology exists, right? And yet, plants all around us are producing this kind of technology in the form of leaves that can do everything I just described and much more. It's absolutely incredible, and yet it's so easy to take for granted because you're just looking at a simple leaf. It's interesting, I, I see somebody left some visual aids here. Oh, I'm losing most of them. <laughs> um, so we see these leaves all around us. Thank you to whoever set these up here. And we don't realize that this technology exists all around us, right? So that's what we're going to be talking about today is the incredible technology of plant leaves and what is happening at the biochemical level as well. So before we dive in too much, I want to ask the question, you may be asking, what do plant leaves have to do with science and faith. This is a conference on science and faith, so how does this tie in? Well, I'd like to um, kind of propose this idea that science and intelligent design is a place where science and faith can really intersect and meet. And what I mean by that is that if you go back and you look at some of the rev revolutionaries of the, the scientific revolution, people like Robert Boyle, Isaac Newton, Kepler, Galileo, these were all men of faith who were motivated by their belief in God to go study the things that he had created. And so they considered it an, almost like an act of worship or an act of devotion to go out into nature and study the natural world and understand it better. There's one particular quote that I love. It's from Robert Boyle, um, who was a strict Sabbatarian. He respected the Sabbath, um, where you know, he would rest on the Sabbath. But he wrote famously in a book called Of the Study of the Book of Nature. He said, I scruple not when opportunity arises to spend some time on the Sabbath in studying the book of the creatures. He's talking about nature. Either by instructing myself in the theory of nature or trying those experiments that may improve my acquaintance with her. Essentially what he's saying is that his study of the natural world caused him to have this awe and wonder at the one who designed it all. And so as a result, he said, I have no trouble going out and doing my scientific investigations on the Sabbath. After all, I'm essentially learning about the creator himself and um, being caused to wonder at what he has made. And then on the flip side, you think about people of faith. Think about the, um, the Hebrew authors, especially David, some of his Psalms, where he's reflecting on the beauty of the natural world and how that, again, causes him to praise. Um, this is one of my favorite passages. This is Psalm number 104. And David writes here, he says, "'You cause the grass to grow for the livestock "'and plants for man to cultivate that he may bring forth food from the earth and wine to gladden the heart of man, oil to make his face shine and bread to strengthen man's heart. 
The trees of the Lord are watered abundantly. The cedars of Lebanon that he planted, in them the birds build their nests. The stork has her home in the fir trees. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Notice that he just, everything he just talked about were plants and he's calling them creatures. So I'm just, just saying. So you see this, this beautiful intersection where the study of the natural world causes you to have awe and wonder for the creator and one's faith in the creator causes one to go investigate the way that he has designed things in the natural world. And so that's why I think that intelligent design is this beautiful place where the two kind of come together. Now, when I said earlier that leaves are like solar panels, and I made this analogy, you may be thinking, okay, essentially there's some ways that they're similar, but are they really that similar? Well, let me just give you a basic description of what a solar panel is. You could describe a solar panel as a large array of photovoltaic cells that use direct sunlight to raise the energy states of elect electrons, thereby creating an electron current, which gives rise to the potential energy in the form of electricity, okay? Just a basic definition of what a solar panel is doing. Now look at the highlighted words that I have there. If I were to replace those green and yellow words on the screen, you would have a really good description of a leaf, of a plant leaf. A plant leaf could be described as a large array of living plant cells they use direct sunlight to raise the energy states of electrons, thereby creating an electron current, which gives rise to potential energy in the form of simple sugars. It is a very similar technology in many ways um, in terms of what it's accomplishing. And Emily will give us a little bit of a, a peek into how it's using electron flow to accomplish this energy conversion. But you may also be asking, okay, so conceptually, a leaf is similar to a, um, a solar panel, but surely anatomically they're quite different. Well, sure, but there's actually some similarities. If you've seen a cross section of a solar panel like this one, you've seen that it's got several layers of different materials, all that accomplish different purposes. It's got an aluminum frame, a silicon seal, a layer of glass. It's got the solar cells. It's got, of course, wires that are conducting the electrical energy from place to place. And when you look at the cross-section of a leaf, you see a similar thing. You see an arrangement of particular materials or cell types that are each accomplishing a different function for this technology. So at the top of the leaf, you have a waxy cuticle, this is protective covering. You have the upper epidermis. You, in the middle, in the um, mesophyll section, you have the palisade cells where photosynthesis is largely taking place with its chloroplasts. You have the vascular bundles, which are essentially like the wires of a, of a solar panel conducting material back and forth in the plant. And then the lower, lower epidermis with all the stoma or pores that allow gas exchange with the environment. It's an incredible technology. It relies on each of these different cell types to do exactly what they were designed to do. And the amazing thing is that you don't just see that there's this one leaf type in the world and that somehow, you know, evolution can explain how we, we ended up with this beautiful canonical leaf. What you actually see is that every unique environment around the planet has a different leaf type that's specially designed for that climate, for that environment. And so what I just showed you is kind of like a typical canonical leaf. But if you look in all these different environments, I've just shown a few on the screen, you'll actually see that there's a different type of leaf design for each environment. 